switch to the title. Andrew has a dream, a almost statically linked dream, where video games can be built and distributed for Linux as distro agnostic executables. Gaben, I know you're watching. Put down Half-Life Alex episode 2 because you might want to watch this. The talk is 2021, year of the Linux gaming desktop. Andrew, the stream is yours. Okay, I think people can hear you now. Let's go. What's up, everybody? It's Andrew. Remember me? I'm that guy. Um, all right, let's talk about 2021, year of the Linux desktop. I'm going to tell you about how I made a proof of concept for portable Linux game executables that can run on any Linux distribution. Everyone always talks about year of the Linux desktop. Is it going to be this year? No, it's not. But let's explore this idea. Why are Windows and Mac OS more popular than Linux? It's just because of games. That's my premise. There's the single one reason why these operating systems are more popular. Why do game developers choose Windows and Mac OS over Linux? Well, because they're not stupid. They're trying to make money. And this is based on the Steam hardware software user surveys. And if your goal is to make money and you're not targeting the blue part of that pie chart, you're, you're doing it wrong. If you're targeting the yellow part of the pie chart, thank you. But obviously, that's not going to make you money. Why do gamers choose Windows? Why is there so much of a big blue area there? Because that's where the games are. We got here is a feedback loop. Uh, it's just self-reinforcing. Uh, you can't. You know, if the if the if the games are on Windows, then they're gonna gamers are gonna come to Windows, and then the game developers are gonna target Windows, and it's just gonna it's gonna stay there. Uh, I don't have an idea to break the feedback loop. It's too hard. Um, so is twenty twenty one the year of the Linux desktop? Nope, because I can't break the feedback loop. Uh, that was just a, a bait and switch clickbait title. Uh, but I do have a idea to make the Linux gaming experience seamless for players, which I think is worth exploring. And maybe we can widen that Yale part of the pie chart a little bit. All right, demo time. Uh, I know that um, a large part of my audience here will be watching this uh, later on, I don't know, Vimeo or YouTube or whatever. And it might be months, weeks, years later after this talk. Um, tell you what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave this URL up. I won't clean my temp directory for years. Don't worry, I already haven't cleaned my temp directory for years. It's a, it's a beautiful little URL here, static window 9. Um, you can guess why there's a 9 there. It just has to do with how many times I failed before. Uh, but this is a Linux uh, ELF file. Um, if you trust me, I, I promise this is just this little window with the with the triangle here. Um, if you want to try it, if you have Linux and you want to try it, uh, see if it works for you after, after all this time. Um, I'm not confident that years later it'll still work, uh, but maybe. Let's find out. Um, so what I think should happen then is if you're on Linux and if the VK Cube demo app works for you, I think this one will work for you too. That's the proof of concept. So. What this application is doing 
is it's actually using, so it's using X11, or if you have Wayland installed, it's going to use the, uh, you know, extension of Wayland that supports the X11 protocol. Um, and it's going to actually interact with your system Vulkan drivers and just draw this triangle. It's just a hello world triangle. Doesn't even support resizing or exiting. You have to kill it manually. Um, but I, I've tested this on Ubuntu, Nixos, Muscle-based Void Linux, glibc-based Void Linux, Clear Linux, Arch Linux, Debian SID. Uh, and it's able to, the same binary is able to run on all these uh, different distributions. So I, I think this is a compelling idea, and I want to show you all of the, the problems I had to overcome in order to make this proof of the concept work. And uh, just to show you that, uh, I mean, it's I'm showing you a slide right now, but I want to just actually run it. I mean, obviously, I can. I, th there it is, right? No, not not fooling you. Okay. So. What are some of the problems? Like, why is this actually hard? If you're not familiar with this problem space, uh, you might just be thinking, wow, this is just a hello world triangle. Like, what? wow, like whoop de doo that's so easy on Windows. And yeah, that's one way that Windows is way better as a game development platform uh, than Linux. Uh, because here are some of the problems that Linux introduced into this use case um, that arguably don't need to be here. So first of all, if you look at a normal uh, a normal binary, such as uh, VKQ. Uh, I think I need to install Vulkan tools. If we just look at, uh, so this is this is the VKQ program. If we just look at it, and we look at the dependencies that it has, um, you can see that it has a dynamic dependency on X11, on libc, and uh, Vulkan loader driver. And these things are, are uh, Linux distribution dependent. Um, so the problem is that the way that the Vulkan drivers are available is dynamic linking with system libc. And that's the, the problem with different Linux distributions is that they all have, uh, they, they can have different kinds of libc. So you can have muscle, or you can have glibc, or you can have other. Those are the two most common ones, but you can have other. Uh, also, you have to hard code the uh, dynamic linker path. So for example, on the same binary here, if I look at uh, read elf, uh, oh, my, my face is right there, isn't it? Uh, also, the font size is too small. If I do read elf on, on this binary, and I do, I read the dynamic, uh, or, sorry, I read the, um, the sections here, we can see that we have this interpreter inside of the binary. And this path right here, this is the path to the dynamic linker. It's hard coded in the binary. So if I try to if I try to run this binary VK cube on a different Linux, it would just say like error. It would never execute. It never even gets main because this path wouldn't exist on your computer. And the problem is it's different on different uh, distributions. On on muscle based Linuxes, it's one path. On glibc distributions, it's another path. On Nix OS, it's the special path, uh, and so on. So that's another problem that prevents this from working. That's one of the reasons that, for example, um, Steam only supports like Ubuntu-based Linux because they're trying to eliminate all of this different um, these different situations and just only target one thing. So how do we solve this problem? Because the dynamic linker code runs before main, so it's like we can't even put code in there to solve the problem because the problem has to be solved before our code runs. Well. Jonathan Marler uh, also shares my dream about this issue, and I've been I've been talking up a bunch of I've been talking up a storm. I've been describing this this vaporware solution to this problem for a while, but I hadn't done anything. But Jonathan Marler actually went off and he made this uh, this uh, repository and he explored one of these concepts. And what he came up with was a proof of concept of an elf binary that you could execute statically. But then it would it would call execve on itself with a hard coded path to the dynamic linker, because the way it works is that if you just take uh, if you just take this this thing here, this dynamic linker, it's actually an executable, um, even though it's a .so. And if you pass it the first parameter to the e in exe, 
it will run the exe uh, uh, dynamically linked with with this dynamic linker. So he he did a proof of concept on this, and it worked, and it it inspired me. It inspired me to, to it gave me the itch to to take it even further. So this one this one had a little bit of downsides because it required uh, building the binary with a dynamic dependency on a dummy shared library to make sure that the executable had the dynamic section. Um, and then also um, it just had to, it had to hard code the path to the dynamic linker. Um, so I was inspired to take it even further and I came up with a strategy. So what we want to do is we'll have, we'll have a binary that does not have any dynamic dependencies. So it's, it's statically linked, but it has a dynamic section. So it supports being run with the dynamic linker as the interpreter. And then inside main, it will check at runtime if we're running in the dynamic linker. If it's not, find where the dynamic linker path is at runtime, and then use that path that detected at runtime to exec the E itself. Then it has to detect which libc is the system libc. And then it can DL open libc. And then it can use that to find and load the Vulkan driver at runtime. And then finally, we can just do the, the game code to do the triangle. So that was my idea. Uh, but there were a lot of problems to overcome in order to accomplish this. So the first problem is this thing where we have a hybrid ELF file that supports both being run statically uh, and also being run dynamically linked. So I'll show you an example here. I showed you LDD on uh, the VK cube, but now I'm going to show you on the, um, the binary here. It says statically linked, OK? But if we take a look with read elf, and we do the L section here, we can see that there's not an interp section. So it does not say that there has to be an, uh, a dynamic loader, because otherwise we would have to put the path in there, and we don't know what the path is. But it does have a dynamic section. So let's take a look at what the dynamic section says. So the dynamic section has all of these entries. Um, this is just trash. I, I could get rid of this. That's just garbage. Um, the thing that's important here is that we do not have any needed tags. So there, there is a dynamic section, but there is not any particular dynamic libraries that it depends on. So the way that this is accomplished is that when we build uh, when we build this executable, we actually do create a dummy uh, library. And we make the static, uh, the static window executable link against the dummy library, dynamically linked. This one is not dynamically linked. This one is dynamically linked. It's shared. So that makes sure that there's a dynamic section. But then we use the patch elf tool, and we use remove needed on the, the dummy library. And so all this does is it just, there was one of these entries that just said needed lib dummy, and it just deleted it. That's all this did. So we made it dynamically linked, but then we just deleted all the dependencies from uh, so that it actually doesn't have any dynamic libraries that it has to run. So what this means is that we have a executable that supports being run both dynamically and statically. So it has a dynamic section, but no dynamic dependencies. And the OS or Linux will not try to run it with a dynamic linker because there's no interp uh, entry. So that brings us to, uh, that gets us to main. Now we can get to main. So what does main have to do? Main has a really interesting problem to solve because when we, when we get here, we get into main, we don't, we, we, we we have two entry points here. On one hand, we could be being run um, in the dynamic linker, or we could be on the first run where we have to figure out where the dynamic linker is. So in this code, in the very beginning of main, it's actually, we don't know which one it is. We have to support both. So the way that we check is we actually have a weak X turn on the deal open uh, symbol. And so this is an important symbol because, first of all, this symbol is provided by libc. 
and it lets us dynamically load other libraries at runtime. And it's neat because making it a weak extern symbol means that um, we support if it's not available, in which case um, this code will run because we don't have DL open because we're being run statically. However, if, if the symbol is available, um, then we go down here and we know that we're actually running inside the dynamic linker. So this is the code that we have to solve first. This is the code where we have to find the dynamic linker and then execve ourself so that we can re-enter main, but this time we have a dynamic linker. But we don't know which Linux distribution we're on. We're determining that information at runtime. Luckily, uh, a lot of these problems are already solved by the Zig compiler itself, and they're um, put in the standard library instead of in the compiler implementation because they're generally useful. For example, right here. Um, so we already have uh, this uh, uh, this function to detect native target info. And part of the native target info that's detected is, what is the path to the dynamic linker? So we get the path. And then what we're going to do is we create an argv, where the first argv0 is the dynamic linker that we just detected. And then the first argument is the path to our own executable. So I'll come back to these, but just to show you that part. Um, so argv is right here. Yeah. So the first arg is the dynamic linker. Uh, and then, oh, we're just respecting the um, other args in the function, but then we're inserting one in there. So we're going to put, uh, yeah, right here. Wait, I thought we were putting the arg to self exe. OK, I got confused there for a second. We're definitely putting the dynamic linker in the first arc there. And then, oh, 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 right, right. So the situation is that the, uh, the path to the self-executable is already in the arg thing. So all we have to do is shift them over and put the dynamic linker first. Yeah, um, sorry for the confusion. So that's for the arg arguments. Now, we also have to mess with the environment variable a little bit because what we're going to need to use DL open which is in libdl. And we're going to need to use um, some bthread stuff for mutexes. So we need, uh, next time we come into main, when we w if we come in from the dynamic linker, we do need some of the libc stuff to be loaded. And we don't, normally, it's in the dynamic section here. But remember, we had to strip out all of our needed tags. So we have to explicitly mess with the environment variable here. So we actually take advantage of ld preload when we invoke ourselves. And we put libdl and libpthread inside the preload environment variable. And that way, when we call execve, this wipes out the executable's uh, like kind of state and replaces it with reloading itself. But now we're going to have these libc things available. And they're going to drag in whatever dependencies they have. So that's, that's going to get us what we need. So next time we come into main, we get dl open. Now it's not null. Now we can call DL open because now we're running in the dynamic linker. Boom. Now we're here. So that is how we can have a uh, executable that is both static and dynamic at the same time. That's not all, though. That's not all the problems. We still have to solve more problems. I'll show you. Okay, so next one, libc agnostic code. Now the problem is, I just showed you some of this stuff here where um, the LDD on, on BK cube, this is glibc. Uh, but on other Linux distributions, it's muscle. And that's what this code is. So even after we load with the dynamic linker, um, not all libcs are built the same. So on, on glibc, it, it kind of just brings in everything all at once, and we can just go straight to here. Um, for muscle, it's kind of more uh, bare bones. So we have to do a little bit of work to set up. We have to call muscle's uh, libc start main and give it a, a pointer to um, 
you know, we have to call exit manually, we have to do some some more DL opens here on the libc symbols. But eventually we're gonna end up in main two on the muscle case, just the same. And the important part here is that we also can call native target info detect. Same thing we were doing earlier. Again, this is that um, that code that we have for the for the Zig compiler purposes. But now, um, you know, because because the Zig compiler can detect your libc, so we want to detect the native triple. Right there, we detected that it's glibc. That same code can be used to detect: do we do we want a dynamic link against muscle, or do we want a dynamic link against glibc at runtime? And that gets us into finally the actual part where we can interact with the uh, Vulkan and the X11 APIs. But that's still not all the. We still didn't solve all the problems. There's still more problems to solve. So finally, I had to hack up Vulkan Loader. So Vulkan Loader is a project by Kronos Group, uh, and the purpose of it is to find the Vulkan drivers and populate the function pointers corresponding to the official Vulkan API. Um, it does a lot of work for you because it does smooth over, smooth over the differences in some systems. Um, and I was able to hack it up to build statically. So what I did was I I just took the uh, let's go back into the, this one. There. So I took the um, I took the source files from Vulkan Loader, only the ones that were needed. And I put them in there. And so you can see that if we look at the build script here, I had to add, I used the fact that Zik can file C code uh, using you know, the libclang abilities. Um, I, I defined C macros a certain way. Um, I had to force it to use position independent code. Uh, and then I just listed only the files that we actually really need. And so when you run Zig build on this project, it will go ahead and build all the Vulkan loader stuff that we need statically, um, but with pick so that we can it can also support being run dynamically. And then here's the here's the tricky part. I had to create my own uh, libc h file and put all the libc functions that this project depended on. This, I made this file here, um, and I had to put attribute weak on all of them. So that way, when we go into um, main here, the first one, and we are actually running statically, the thing is we still have Vulkan loader inside. All, all those functions that call libc are still in there, but they're not going to work because we're not actually loading libc right now. So if we tried to call it, it, inside here, if we tried to call any of the Vulkan loader stuff, it would crash because every single libc function like mem copy mem set, um, you know, put char, f close, closed or all these, they would all just segmentation fault because they're all zero, they're all null because they're weak. Weak means that you want it to link if you can, but if not, just make it null. So I had to, I had to override all of the libc functions here um, because what we had to do is make Vulkan loader it's going to run. It doesn't know which libc it's going to run against. At run, it, it finds out at runtime, right? So I had to hack that up. Um, and then I also had to hack uh, a patch into it, uh, RTLD global. I think it's this one. Yeah. So I also changed, uh, I also changed this. Or was it the X11 one? Anyway, I, I had to add a patch where instead of RTLD local, I used RTLD global. Because um, when we finally get down to main two down here, it's right here, I added a comment about it. Um, we need to DL open the X11 shared library. And the the Vulkan library, the Vulkan uh, driver will depend on this. 
So we know that by loading, by, by um, using the Vulkan loader, by using this, uh, this is actually going to call, I don't know, it's going to call the first Vulkan loader function. And when that happens, that's going to force this to be loaded. And what we wanted to happen was that um, we wanted the dynamic loader to cache this so that when we do it, we just get the same one that the Vulkan driver already loaded. So I had to add a patch to um, to, to the um, Vulkan loader in order to do a global load instead of a local load. And that allowed, that guarantees that this will work um, instead of trying to like namespace them or separate them by making it global. So I had, I had to patch it in order to do that. Um, so I showed you weak linkage, I did a patch. Yeah, and also caveat emptor, I was on the Discord group, I think, and I was talking to one of the maintainers of this library, uh, and they were saying that they don't like it when people static link uh, Vulkan loader because I don't remember. There's some there's some reason that it's they don't want you to static link it, uh, but it does make the game work. So um, I don't know. Maybe they should consider this a use case. Maybe they can try and make it work. Uh, maybe they can. Maybe Linux distribution maintainers can cooperate with Vulkan Loader and make sure that you can statically link against it because this is what players want. They want to run the game. Uh, okay, I think that I think that kind of demonstrates what I had to do with Vulkan Loader there, and it's kind of a problem, right? Because if I wanted to, you know, this is very much a proof of concept. Because if I uh, if you go look at um, if you go look at the Vulkan Loader project, it it's got recent commits, and I, 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 it's a copy pasted code. I have to go pull those commits in, and and um, you know, it's a you have to maintain a fork. Basically, it's a fork, you know. So it's a it, it creates work for yourself to try and keep up to date with them. Um, so lots of caveats here in this proof of concept. Okay, and then finally, um, all that's left once we solve these problems is uh, the application code. Um, inside here to just do the um, X11 API calls that we have to do to set up a window, set up a, um, a Vulkan context, all that stuff. Ultimately, what these are all doing is um, sending uh, messages over a socket to the X11 server. But it's you know, the most likely way to make it work is by actually using the libc shared objects that the same ones that the the actual graphics driver links against. That way, we just know everything's using the same stuff. Now, I did also have to do some tricks here, uh, because we want to cross-compile this, obviously. And um, the these H files, uh, Vulkan Loader depends on. And so I don't want these to be, um, they can't be from my system. Although that, that would be wrong. So I had to. I had to go into X11, and I had to find out, figure out in their weird build system how to produce these files, and then I had to go tweak the, the pound defines to be um, like safe for cross compiling. So there's a little bit of work here to do too, um, but it works. Um, these are fine. I, ch I checked them out, and they're uh, you know it's, it's it's fine. It's just constants that won't change because it's a network protocol. They can't you know the they can't change these things because it would break uh, it would break their ABI. So that's it. That's all that's left is just the part where you do a hello world triangle with X11 and with uh, this is just like basic basic Vulcan. Um, I just followed the tutorial VulcanTutorial.com to do the triangle. That's all this is. Uh, let's see. Yeah. So. That's it. That's that's my demo. Um, that that's all the tricks that I had to do to make this work. And I know there's probably some people out there, some uh, some game devs, uh, who are interested in in this. And probably I'm guessing your projects are in C or C plus plus, and you want to see how realistic this is. Uh, honestly, it's not realistic. It's a proof of concept. You're gonna have to jump through a lot of hoops to make this work. Now, I think this is worth pursuing. Um, but I really think that the kind of kind of conclusion that I want to make here is that um, we we do need driver vendors and Linux distribution maintainers to explicitly acknowledge this use case. 
I, a lot of these hoops are arbitrary and unnecessary. And I'm demonstrating that it's possible to get around them. Um, but really, I think that what we just need is for is an acknowledgement that this is the user experience that users does, that players deserve. And we, we just need more people to uh, demand this as how it works on, on Linux. So I hope I hope this inspires you to just raise your standards for what we could have. And if enough people believe that, you know, there's a minimum bar of what's acceptable, then it, it, the bar will raise. That's kind of what my goal is with this. Um, so uh, if you want to check it out, uh, the source code is here. Um, it's very unpolished. It also regressed recently. It won't build right now um, due to some like actual improvements that we made into the way that Zig links code and the arguments that we passed to uh, LLD. And so my conclusion here is that this use case is special. There's a lot of moving parts here. And I think to avoid regressing this, like if we wanted to actually support this use case, I think it would have to be an explicitly recognized use case by, by tooling uh, in order to have it be uh, reliably supported in the long term. Because if it's just a list of tricks that you have to do to make it all work, it's going to regress. Like, if you don't care about this use case, it's just going to get trampled over because it's kind of weird. Like, the idea of a hybrid, you know, like, why would you have a dynamic section when you actually don't have any dynamic dependencies? Like, a normal, a, a, a normal, if you, if you just use like your reasoning and you're writing a linker, you're like, well, I'm going to omit, I'm going to omit the dynamic section because there's nothing dynamic about this, right? So it's like, you actually have to think about this use case explicitly if you want it to not regress. That's that's kind of my takeaway here. Um, and that's just not the status quo. Um, so yeah, I think that's uh, that's about it. And uh, I think we're going to have a QA section, but I'll let, uh, I'll let Loris uh, say some words and, um, and kick that off. OK, thank you, Andrew. Uh, yeah, so let's switch to the Q&A. Okay. Um, let's see, let's see, let's see, let's see. So uh, while people uh, start typing questions, by the way, just uh, as a reminder to everybody, um, try to keep it things on topic. Uh, I'm sure people have a ton of questions for Andrew, but we're going to talk about the Z roadmap uh, next. So uh, let's reserve your more general questions for uh for that part of the show uh so while people start thinking and typing up questions actually no before that uh just as a reminder i'm looking at twitch chat i'm looking at discord and i'm also looking at irc so like hashtag zig on uh free node so uh just make sure to tag me and i'll be happy to take your questions for andrew uh wherever you're most comfortable writing them uh, so while people think of questions, Andrew, uh, usually I start by asking how you stumble. But no, wait. Um, <laughs> so um, uh, that was interesting. Thank you. I think you you raise a great point with the with the idea of having expectations, and and I, and I think this is a this is a great point. This is one of the reasons why I uh, I'm on a. Um, uh, my main machine is a Mac computer. It's not a Linux machine, and it's not like I like Apple. I do not like Apple, but that's <laughs> how that's how it is for me, uh, for other reasons. And yeah, I, th I think your point is very variable, available for um, for this ecosystem. So okay, let's see, <laughs> let's see what people are saying. Okay, so let's start with GW one. Um, could you implement an X eleven protocol in Zig to not have to have a dynamic dependency on XCB, Juicebox has started doing this. You can, you can avoid um, a dynamic dependency on X11 libraries just fine. However, if you want to use graphics drivers such as Vulkan or OpenGL, the graphics drivers have a dynamic dependency on the X11 libs. So you're already paying the cost no matter what. If you want to load the graphics drivers, you are loading the X11 shared objects into your memory space, whether you like it or not. So my opinion is if you have to do it, uh, my, my logic goes like this. 
Premise one, we need to use the graphics drivers. Premise two, the graphics drivers use the X11 shared objects. Uh, premise three, we're paying the cost. Therefore, we're pay paying the cost for graphics or for X11 shared objects, no matter what. Conclusion: You should just use them since you have to. You have to. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Um, so, next question from Zakus: uh, When is the Valve sponsorship coming? Valve sponsorship? Yeah. Hey, Valve, you want to sponsor Zig? You should definitely do it. Everyone's gonna be writing games in Zig in five years. Makes sense. Um, I'll make sure to relay this to Gaben. Um, yeah. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Just call, so, call him on the phone. Yeah. I, I always do that. Every time I miss my shots with the Tech 9 in CSGO, I uh, <laughs> call him up and start complaining. So yeah. what were the reasons, what were all the reasons you couldn't use the Vulkan SO? Uh, Wixi symbols and RTLD global. Uh, wouldn't the C symbols work since you weren't since you aren't calling Vulkan until after you're loaded libc? Uh, not quite sure if I understand the question, but let me try and let me know if I answered it correctly. Okay. Um, so the first the first thing I tried here was uh, I had this, and I did not have a patch to um, Vulkan By the way, loader. Uh, Andrew, you are not sharing your screen anymore. I think. Let me see if it's still on my side. Uh, should I refresh the Laplace? Uh, no, it was definitely on my side. So, okay, okay, you're good to go. Okay, so the first thing I tried was um, I tried to DL open uh, this shared object, which I know was already loaded into the application's uh, virtual memory uh, by Vulkan Loader. And it just said null. It said there isn't one there uh, because Vulkan Loader used local. And if you use local, uh, what does the documentation for it say? I don't remember. But the point is, because Vulkan Loader used local, and then I tried to do it later, it just said that it didn't happen because um, it was a different object or something. But when I switched them to use global, then this was started being guaranteed to uh, return a, a valid um, object. Did that answer the question? Um, I hope so. That was a pretty advanced question for me. Uh, I guess Marler will let us know, by the way, it was from, from him. So, okay. Um, uh, so Marla, let us know. In the meantime, I'll go through the other questions. Uh, 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 what would you need to change to make this work with Wayland? Uh, nothing, because Wayland is, supports the X11 protocol. How do you like that answer? <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'll give a more serious answer, though. I mean, that is a serious answer, but um, I'll, I'll, I'll give another part two answer. Uh, if you wanted to explicitly support Wayland. How that would work is um, here, we would just first try opening a Wayland object. Uh, and presumably, um, it works the same way, where the graphics driver depends on Wayland instead of X11. So we would just try to open a Wayland object. And then if we got it, we use that one. Otherwise, we fall back to this one. So it'd be pretty straightforward. Um, but I am of the strong opinion that if Wayland is doing it right, uh, this code should all just work fine on Wayland with almost no penalties. Okay, another and question. It, it, oh, yeah. sorry. So, so, nothing, nothing. Okay. Um, another question. I'm not sure. I'm not fully, and I don't fully understand it, but maybe you can do a better job than me. So, uh, can the needed section be just the lib name.so without the absolute path. I'm thinking this refers to the dynamic linker. Can it be just the lib name without the dynamic path? Let's take a look at uh Yeah, without the absolute path. So I'm assuming it's the dynamic linker, but I'm I'm not sure. Maybe there's an there's another SO file mentioned somewhere that has an absolute path. So here's um Here's VK cube. This is this is kind of like our our uh, control case, right? This is a traditional app, yep. you know, linked the normal way. Um, so here's the needed entries for this one. You can see it has one for XCB. Uh, these are all for libc, and then there's the Vulkan driver. Uh, and it's it's not an absolute path. The absolute paths come in with the run paths here. And the problem is that you don't even if even with this way, you just don't know what the run. Uh, you don't know what the run paths are until runtime. That's the problem. Like this, this run path, this this run path would be wrong for other distros. 
Mm -hmm. um, okay, maybe June will let us know if um, follow-up is needed. So, so Johnny Marley was saying then, then well, given your answer, then if we patched Vulkan to use global somehow, uh, we could use the SO. Patched Vulkan or Vulkan loader? Because the example here, what's happening is that um, we call in, in here, we end up calling a bunch of initialization functions inside of Vulkan loader to load the Vulkan driver. And that's the code that is doing DL open, uh, or, or sorry. Yeah, that's the code that's doing DL open on here. And so all we're trying to do is just get the same one. Um, so yeah, if Vulcan loader was patched, we, we could just send the patch upstream, see if they want it. Um, there, there would be arguments to not do it, but um, in this case, it's the right call. It's not a driver patch, though. It's a, it's a patch to uh, the Vulcan loader. OK. Um, I think, OK, people are confirming that the answers were satisfactory. So nice. Cool. <laughs> uh, Nailed it. Awesome. Well, I mean, jokes aside, Valve is already doing a bunch of work to make games work on Linux, right? Uh, Steam yeah. is doing a lot of things, and I think it's being fairly successful. I think there's also some games that actually run better on Linux than they do on Windows. So, I I hope that I sincerely hope that um, people at Valve uh, watch this short talk and get inspired and uh, use their influence and power to help the uh, Linux distribution ecosystem support this use case better. I think that the users want it, the players want it, the game developers want it. And ultimately, the Linux maintainers, the package maintainers, are going to do what people want. So we just have to make people want this more. <laughs> OK. Um, makes perfect sense. Um... Okay, so I think we can call it um, we can call it here. So thank you, Andrew, for the talk. That was amazing. Uh, we're gonna take a break, and after the break, we're coming back and we're gonna talk about the Z roadmap. So um, I guess the second part is gonna be uh, even better. So um, see you all soon. <laughs>